This ish is bananas. Bonkers chop fest today in the markets. We're looking at a spy chart on the one minute. Talk about a wacky and wild ride. As you all know, if you're looking at the charts intraday, just explosive moves back and forth, finishing rather unchanged on the S&P 500. We're going to go over to, into some of my thoughts today of some of the price action. We're also going to hop into crypto. You're watching the Stock Market Brief Show. My name is Michael Silva. If you're new here, welcome to the show. We use technical analysis, intermarket analysis to get a good idea as to where the market might be headed next. If you haven't done so already, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Yes, and sub as well. Almost at that 100K mark. Crazy. Alrighty, everybody, welcome back. We're going to start off here at the market dashboard. Now, everything was pretty much down on the day. Rather flat for the most part, right? There's just a lot of chop back and forth, throwing people around. Now, if we look at the 11 sectors that make up the S&P 500, something stands out. Energy stands out quite a bit, okay? Energy was up 4%. And everything else was, you know, subpar, right? We had materials and utilities up there too as well. Consumer discretionary was towards the bottom and XLK was rather unchanged too. So yeah, it was suppressed seeing these three horsemen like financials, consumer discretionary, and tech down here. Um, and you could see that kind of within the markets, okay, overall. Now, there was a lot of opportunity in the markets, especially if you were looking at various stocks throughout this last weekend setting up. Now, me personally, I put out a watch list on my Discord group, and I'm just going to show you a snapshot of it. This right here is my watch list, okay, and I share this every week. Those were all green stocks, and these were the only red stocks on the day. So a lot of a lot of these names that I was finding were forming what's known as bull flags. They were consolidating nicely and they looked like they were just about to break out. And we got a lot of those that did catch to the upside and some. So there is still a lot of opportunities in the market. Whether you're a bear or a bull, you just got to know exactly where it is to look. Now, yields, they have been moving quite insane this last trading day. First and foremost, the 30 and 5 spread is now down to 0.22. And then we have the 10 and 2 at 0.18. You can see the yields have blasted off into outer space today. Is that going to hold? Are we going to see continued rise of yields? Hey, it's possible, right? Like I said in previous episodes, there's an ex Goldman Sachs employee, Sachs employee saying basically that he can see this going to 2.5, which is 2.5 on the 10 year in a blink of an eye. And well, today it was up 7.77% in percentage basis terms. Now, whether this is just a quick hit to maybe potentially backtest this and might, might sink off, come with like of a trading range, is yet to be seen. So we'll continue to monitor that. Meanwhile, 10-year yield ripped up higher. What does that do to bonds? Well, bonds got hit and they got hit hard. Now, I don't have the chart up here to show the, the um, risk range, but we're already trading outside of the weekly risk range. So actually, in my in my opinion here, this does seem like an area where you know it could potentially come right back up. I still have my position on, being that it's rather small, and then I, I had a short position on too as well on the Qs. So it kind of made up for, you know, kind of canceled each other out. So I just remain, I remained in that position. Now, if we take a look at the housing index, which is the one above us, and then we have the S&P 500 below, I still want to call out the divergence that's forming. So we had, you know, a, a flat day to, you know, a choppy day. We did create a new high, new low in the S&P 500, but you can see housing was down 2.53%. So this is right now playing out. This has not played out to the downside yet. And they do move hand in hand, and we've called out many divergences before. So something to pay attention to going forward. Same thing with the advanced decline line that's a negative divergence that i'm watching you can see it's getting weaker here significantly right boom and the market's staying rather um, flat to unchanged for the day so if this, this can catch back up right and then we could see this continue to press up i'm not going to cancel that out but as you'll see going through these charts there are some overextension areas that gets me a little hesitant to just hop right in i still want to see consolidate consolidation and or digest so if we look at the SPY, it's rather unproductive day, right? It was just a lot of chop back and forth, you know, came all the way back down to the 50 day moving average. And we closed where we basically opened, which means we're right there in the middle of the range that was set forth uh, last week um, when we looked at that risk range. Now, if we look at the 15 minute time frame, we did crack down through that rising wedge. We back tested and then we came back and then we started bouncing, right? It was a choppy, choppy day. So the negative divergence has played out to an extent. Same with the PMO negative divergence. Now, what I want to call out here is the, the um, five-day moving average. It's starting to come up, right? And we're not too far from the lower risk. It's basically right on that lower risk range. And you can see here, if you look at the volume shelf profile, this can act well as a magnet. So this could be very well a bear flag, and we might come down a little bit more. 
potentially retest 440, maybe potentially lower. Um, and that could be a potential good entry point. If you are looking for a long position, I would say look more lower to here. Um, but, you know, we got to just wait for opportunities to come. Being that it was so choppy, you know, opportunities are very hard to just jump in when it's very choppy, especially if you're a short term, like a day trader. Um, you got to be very quick and you can get thrown around in that type of volatility. But also for swing traders, right, you need to you need to be very, very picky when it comes to entering into your various spots. Now, the BPSPX chart has moved into overbought territory. So this is why I'm also hesitant to go long where it's at without waiting for a pullback. I would like to see this start coming off. Uh, a little bit, right? This is not the greatest signal chart for long entries when the RSI is there breaking above 70. Um, you keep in mind, it can stay overbought and it can stay overbought for quite some time. But typically what we've seen is it get faded. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, let's continue on. The Qs, same thing, right? Got below that 50 day moving average. You know, it's just been kind of going right around there. It's a doji type candle, means there's indecision, which shows me that there was a fight between both the bulls and the bears. And there was pretty much break even. We finished slightly down on the day. If you take a look at the 15 minute time frame, you can see it's very similar to the S&P 500. Five day moving average is coming up to the lower risk range. Could be forming a bear flag as we broke through the wedge, right? So we, we backed off, which we kind of anticipated, but we, we didn't see too much weakness overall. It was just a lot of volatility. So is there still potentially more downside? It's a possibility, that's for sure. And the reason why is when we look at the BPNDX chart, this is getting even more overbought. So can the FOMO crowd push this up even higher before we get a, you know, a more thorough digestion? Uh, you can't rule that out, but as it stands right now, I'm still remaining into my short position and I actually plan on holding that because I'm still holding my long position. So if the longs continue to press up, which they did in my books, guess what? I'm going to go ahead and take some profits as that goes. And then I get to keep my short on just in case if there is some sort of an event that takes place where we get, you know, a, a, a bigger move to the downside. Okay, if we take a look at IWM, this was the rather weaker one. So this was down almost a percent on the day. But we are, you know, still well above the 50 day, well above the 20 day. The 20 day is rather flat. The, the 50 day is still declining. So maybe a back test to this lower range is still within the realm of possibilities. I would say if we take out the low of today, which is 203.93, I would say that there could be some more um, possibility, more downside to around the lower risk range. So that is something that I'm keeping an eye on. If you look at the 15 minute time frame right now, we talked about this being a Wyckoff pattern for accumulation, right? But we need to see a successful back test. So, you know, don't rule it out. Like if we come back out, right, we're still above that five day moving average. Maybe potentially we get a good back test and then we start lifting higher. Don't rule it out. It's always a possibility. But as it stands right now, you know, it's it's a little bit of a breather, right? It's just a period of digestion in an overall, obviously, range, right? So it's been in a range. It hasn't gone anywhere. So, you know, chops back into the middle. Would you be surprised to see it come right back into the middle of the range right here? Absolutely not, right? That, that, that would make sense to me to see price come back within here, maybe even overshoot and just keep doing what it's doing until it finds a decisive move in that specific direction. Close off with just looking at some volatility charts. So take a look at the VXN. This is NASDAQ vol. NASDAQ vol closed at 28.6 and it hit a high today of just about 30. Uh, so volatility is still really high. All right, this is this is chop fest, chop suey, whatever you want to call it. This that's where we are right now. Okay, we had this big rally, vol got suppressed, but as you can see right now, as it stands, we're just going sideways at still elevated levels in volatility. So be mindful of that. Right, it's not an easy environment yet. Until this comes way off, right, way off, then that's when we could feel a little bit more confident. So the environment still remains to be difficult. RVX Russell volatility also slightly up on the day, right? It closed at just under 30. So this is this is where people get chopped up. And that's exactly what we're starting to see here in the markets or continuing to see. And then if you look at the VIX, this came off, uh, you know, this was very, you know, big crush down to the downside this last trading week. And, you know, it's still here at 23.53. So, you know, are we going to head lower? Maybe, but we haven't crossed down through this 20 for quite some time. It's been you know, uh, you know, since where were we? Yeah. Just like, oh my gosh, I, has it really been that long? Yeah. So earlier this year, um, earlier this year in January, but I mean, geez, to be above the 20 marker for that long is quite some time. So if you're looking for a very solid short position, right, if we come down to this lower range and we get down there quickly, um, where the market kind of extends even further, that could be a potential good area for fading. But as it stands right now, we're still rather elevated at this particular point in time. All right, everybody, that's all I got for you on today's episode. A quick um, 
heads up. So tomorrow I might not be placing out, putting out an episode. And if I do, if I'm able to, um, it'll be probably a very, very short one. So be on the lookout for that. But yeah, that's all I got for you. I will see you back here on the next episode.